Hey, hope you're having a good Tuesday. Thank you for joining me for today's Five for Five. All this week, we're encouraging um, everyone to use their words to send an encouraging text. Um, I'm out here in my backyard tonight, and um, you can hear the cicadas making a lot of noise right now. And, um, you know, we're often kind of known by the sounds we make, by the things we say. And um, just as much as you can hear these, you know, the things we say to others, people know us by those too. And um, the question is, are we just making a lot of noise, or are we saying something that's significant? In life, what are we trying to say to people uh, that we come in contact with? In John chapter 6, uh, verse 60, you pick up there and you see that many disciples began to leave Jesus because they didn't like what Jesus was saying. They didn't like what they were hearing coming from Jesus. He had said some confusing things about um, drinking his blood and eating his flesh, and they didn't quite understand that he was speaking symbolically. But this was also a step Jesus was taking to separate those who were truly devoted to him and ready to follow. And he turned to his closest disciples. When many turned away, he would turn to his disciples and say to them, uh, asking the question in verse 66, it says, After many of his disciples turned back and no longer walked with him, Jesus said to the twelve, do you want to go to way as well? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life, and we have believed and have come to know that you are the Holy One of God. Peter spoke up for the group. He spoke up and said, there's nowhere else we need to go. There's nowhere else we can go, because what we hear from you are the words of eternal life. They're the words that would lead to salvation. Peter knew this. Peter knew that Jesus' words were the truth and the way and the only way to true salvation and eternal life in God. And so he knew that no matter how difficult the conversation may be, no matter how much he misunderstood, that Jesus was the one that he needed to follow. It's interesting that Jesus would say later in the book of John in chapter 12 that the words of life, the words of eternal life came from the Father. And in chapter 15, he would say that he had given those same words to his disciples and those who would follow. And then in the books of, book of Acts, Luke would write down that the disciples would go and share the words of life. We as Jesus followers get to join him in the work of what he's doing. And we get to go and share the words of eternal life with the people who we come in contact with. We get to speak grace into their lives. And just as these cicadas around me, when I hear them at this time of night, I know what's going on and I know those little bugs are all over the place. The world around us hears us and they see us each and every day. But what do they know us for? What do they hear coming out of our mouths? What do they hear coming out of our lives as we speak the words that we speak? Do we speak words of eternal life? Do we speak the, the direct message of the gospel into their lives? Are we speaking words of encouragement, words of grace? Are we speaking those types of words? Or are they hearing words that sound a lot like everyone else in the world and, and just continuing on their way? Today I want to encourage you, look at this chapter, John chapter 6. And pray about the words that you speak and the words that you say. And pray about how God would have you to use those words to bring him glory and to bring more people into the life that he gives so abundantly. Hope you have a great day.